force in the spring. We have a spring which is suspended from the roof and we suspend one mass here. This mass because of the earth's gravitation force developed a force mg which is applied on the spring. Now when we started this put it here the force was mg it comes down 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 up to this strength and again it is mg. Now why it is not going further down? The answer is that initially this force in the spring, the force of reaction in the spring was not sufficient to balance mg. So it would become unbalanced force and it was trying to come down. Then see here and when it rises trying to come down then this spring is not applying any force upward initially. Then net force was how much? Net force is equal to mg minus 0. This is the net force. Now suppose because this net force was there it started moving moving down. The moment it is moved the tension develops in the string that means there is the extension of the string and because of the extension there is tension in the string and this becomes like this here. Now there is the extension and because of this extension there is a reacting force developed inside the spring. What do that want? That force want the length of string, the length of the spring should come back here. This is what is uh, the uh, force trying to do. So this force is trying to pull it up and when more is the extension more is the force. A time comes when this force is equal to this applied force mg. If it is like this then how much is net force? Net force is 0. Here net force was mg in this case, in this case net force is 0. If net force is 0 it will not move any further and it will stop here. So why it has stopped here? Because the net force has become 0. Why net force has become 0? Because inside the spring a force has developed which is equal to mg. So it does not go any further. Suppose mg is a heavier mass it will go a little more again it will stop okay this is balanced and unbalanced force now how much is the force developed in the spring to study that we have to study it once again and now we will study there is no acceleration here if there is a net force this net force creates a motion our purpose here is not to study the motion or the acceleration. We simply want to study the force which is developed inside the spring. So this is a complicated force. Uh, this is a complicated situation. The force applied mg is much larger than this force and it always remain mg. Okay, this is one situation. What we are trying to study is the force in the spring which is clear made in a situation where mg is not effective. How can we make mg ineffective? Answer is we take a spring on a horizontal surface here. Here is a spring 
which can be compressed and which can be extended here. Okay. I attach one box with this and we can apply force through this box. This is a frictionless surface. So, only force will be applied in this direction or this direction. Mg force is acting in downward direction and it has no participation in this direction. The component of Mg in this direction is 0. So, that is also gone, frictional force is gone. We are discussing only one force which is inside the spring. Now, I apply a force here. If apply a force here, how much force I have to apply if I push it a little, a very small distance I want to push? The answer is I have to apply a very small force that is almost a little more than 0, little more than 0, which will start from 0 and I start pressing it. Now, I have pressed it up to a certain distance. Let us say I have pressed it up to this much distance. How much is this distance? X. If I have pressed it up to this distance, I am not making the box here. Okay, please see this is the boundary. This is the boundary of the spring and I have compressed it how much? X. Now, if I leave it, this will be thrown back. The box will be thrown back. If I want to keep it here, I have to keep my force continuously on this box. Force. Why? Here, I do not have to apply any force. It was here. When it has come here, I have to keep it under a force then only it will stay here. Otherwise, it will go back. Who is pushing it back? The answer is spring is pushing it back. Here, was the spring pushing it back? No. Here, the spring is pushing it back and it should not move. So, to balance the force of spring, I apply my force. Then, not only balancing the force, I apply larger force larger than what is required by the spring. So, what I find that now this spring is compressed more and it is brought here. This was the original position and I brought it here. Now, this bo box or the body is here and I am pushing it with certain force. Here, how much was F1? 0. When I push it a little by this much distance, then I have to apply F2. But if I push it so much distance, I have to apply force F3. And you all know by experiments, by experience that F1 is smaller, F2 is larger force, F3 is very large force. F3 is larger than F2 is larger than F1. Why the force is increasing? Same spring is there, same box is there, same person is there applying the force. Answer because we are pressing the spring. So, the spring replies back by applying a force in this direction. So, spring here it is not pressing at all. Here, it is trying to press it here, force by spring. And to balance this, I have this here. This is the force by spring. It is trying to push it this way. I am trying to push it this way and there is a balance. Both are balanced. It stays here. Now, number one, why a spring should apply a force at all? Answer, it is the structure of molecules between them. I am trying to disturb it with my force and it is trying to remain at its original position. This is the original position. 
here it is compressed so whenever i am changing the position of molecules by pressing it they want to go back i press it they will try to go back okay i say you want to come this way now i extend it and now i find they want to go back so if i press it this way they will apply force in this direction if i push it this way then they apply force to come back that means every object try to maintain the original distance between the molecules and this is physics which gives rise to many phenomena in the nature which are due to the intermolecular force because the molecules want to remain at the distance whichever is best for them uh, there are different features that they will have a minimum energy or whatever it is that we will study later but now what we understand the molecules have a natural distance between them if we are trying to increase or decrease then they will apply a force to come back that force in the spring is the force developed in the spring what do they want to do they want to restore their distances they want to restore their distances therefore we call this force as restoring force this force we should give a name this is applied force and the phenomena what we have studied the phenomena whenever we apply a force on a spring there is a uh, compression of the spring or extension of the spring okay let us say there is a compression in the spring x more is the compression more is the force applied by the uh, spring okay one thing left when we apply force on a string there is a compression as soon as there is a compression another force develops inside the spring this force is equal and opposite in the direction of applied force and it is trying to restore its length restore its position therefore we call it restoring force this restoring force is developed inside the spring please mind this is not restoring force this is restoring force which is developed inside the spring and its direction is always opposite to the applied force now i press it here and stop at that particular moment my force and restoring force both are equal i cannot go inside the molecules of the spring and measure how much is the restoring force but i can very well measure this force but and i also know that these two forces are equal here so if somebody tells me how much is the restoring force here i tell it is f2 he says this is applied force i say okay but it is in balancing condition in balancing condition restoring force is equal to this so i measure this and i say if this force is 10 newton the restoring force is 10 newton if this force is 20 newton the restoring force is 20 newton so student think whatever we apply is the restoring force no it is equal to restoring force but restoring force is always developed inside the spring by the method of balancing its magnitude is equal to the applied force so this is uh, restoring force now this restoring force developed inside this force of the spring is proportionate to which quantity answer this compression that is x now if we make it equal then restoring force of the spring is equal to there has to be a constant x so force on a spring the restoring force is equal to kx and restoring force at any time is equal to applied force
restoring force is equal to applied force of compression F is equal to K x. Now, x is what you can say compression, you can say displacement of this end up to this. What is this K? This is a constant. Now, in one spring we find we apply 10 Newton, it comes here 1 centimeter, but in the other for 1 centimeter we have to apply 20 force. In another spring that is made with thick wire, we have to apply 40 Newton, then only it comes here. That means this K which is force on displacement, force per unit displacement is different for different springs. Therefore, it is a speciality of spring and we call it spring constant. K is spring constant. Yes. So, we got a new physical quantity K. K is spring constant and this is force upon displacement. Now, spring constant, what is its definition? Its definition is force required to compress a spring by a unit length that is spring constant. Okay. This equation if x is made equal to 1 then spring constant is the force when displacement is equal to 1. This is and it is a speciality of the it is characteristic of the characteristic of spring. It is characteristic of spring with different springs it will be different. Hard spring how will be the value compared hard spring and soft spring. Answer for hard spring k will be larger for hard spring k is larger than k for soft spring. So, this is spring constant and this is the force developed inside a spring. Now, this force which is developed inside the spring is equal to the applied force. Initially, when x is small, initially when x is small, then force applied will be small and when we compress it more, the force applied will be x is more. So, force applied will also be more. In this case, the force keeps on increasing. So, whenever we are compressing a spring, our force is never a constant force, it is a variable force. So, please see in the example of compression of spring, the force applied is variable. Is variable. In case of earth attracting a body, the force is mg. The value of g is not changing. If here is the body, force is mg. If here is the body, force is mg. If here is the body, force is mg. So, with this displacement, force mg is not changing. That is a constant force. But in case of spring, here there is a spring, here the force is 0, here the force is 10, here the force is 20. It is a variable force. So please remember it, the example of variable force and constant force. Okay. So, this is what we have studied, force in a spring and in the next lecture, we will see another force and that is force of friction and which is the most required force in our life. Thank you.